Hey, all right, everybody. Lee Lowell here, smartopsandseller.com. Welcome. Today is Saturday, June 5th, 2021. I'm back. Took the weekend off last weekend for making a new video uh, for the Memorial Day weekend holiday here in the U.S. So we're back and we are ready to go with another Saturday YouTube video of options trading strategies as well as our Saturday synopsis where we take a look at the stock charts, see what's been happening over the last couple of weeks and try to make an assessment of what may be coming down the pike. As you can see on your screen, we will be talking about today selling in the money put options. Here at the Smart Options Seller, that is all we do is we sell options, specifically put options and put option credit spreads. That is our bread and butter. That is what we do the best. So obviously we talk mostly about selling put options and other strategies from time to time. As, and if you are a watcher of my YouTube videos, you know that we talk about buying deep in the money call options or selling spreads or how margin works, lots of different topics on options trading strategies. But we mostly concentrate on selling put options because we feel that is probably one of the greatest option trading strategies out there, very high probability of profit, and it brings an infusion of cash into your account and, and offers you the ability to potentially buy a stock of your choosing at a price of your choosing. So we love the strategy. But today we're going to be talking about selling in the money put options. Typically we would sell out of the money put options. So we'll explain that a little bit. I get questions from people all the time. Lee, we know you like to sell out of the money put options, but can we sell in the money put options? If so, how does it work? What kind of return can I see? How does it different than selling out of the money put options? So we will talk about selling in the money put options today. And one other thing I just want to bring to your attention here is that, you know, I continue to get questions and emails from people all the time about learning more about selling put options. You know, they really want to go deep into the into the subject. So this summer, we will be launching our very exclusive, very personal deep dive uh, seminars in selling put options and how to do it. And we'll go from an A to Z deep dive into selling put options. And this will be a very small group. We're only taking 10 students at a time so we can get real personal and we can answer all your questions. This is something that we, we see you know, lasting anywhere from two to three hours in time. So we're going, to go, we're going deep. We're going deep into selling put options. Everything you ever wanted to know about selling put options, this will be part of the, you know, the classes, the seminars, the webinars, whatever you want to call them. We, we will be doing it online. We only take in 10 students at a time, so we get real personal. This is a little different than, than our one-on-one -on -one coaching, which you can talk about anything you want there. This is specifically for put option selling. So if you have an interest in learning you know, everything there is to know about put option selling, at least from what I can teach you, you know, uh, stay tuned for more information on that uh, because we're going to be doing this. Uh, I don't know how many times we'll, we will be doing it because you know, if we go three hours, it takes a lot of time and effort. So uh, if you're interested, you'll make sure you sign up on our website for the, for the put selling basics guide. Let me, let me run that real quick by you here. Put selling basics guide, go to our website, smartoptionseller.com up here. Put selling basics right here. You scroll down, put in your name and email address. In addition to getting our free put selling basics guide, this will get you on the list for any other information that we put out there. So if you're interested in, in this deep dive strategy, you know, 10 students at a time, probably do a couple a month at most, you know, make sure you sign up. And if you have any questions about it, email me as well. All right, so let's get back to our, our topic of the day of selling in the money put options. Now, for some newcomers out there, the 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 uh, strategy of selling put option. Let's just go over the basics here, so we all we're all on the same page. In options trading, there are two types: call options and put options. We only we only discuss put options here mostly, and there are buyers of put options and sellers of put options. We concentrate on the selling side of put options. And when you sell a put option contract, <clears throat> what you're doing is obligating yourself to potentially buy a stock at a specific price sometime in the future. What price is that? Well, that's called the strike price. And you can sell a put option contract at any strike price you want, okay? If the stock's at 100, 
You can sell a $90 put option. You can sell a $50 put option. You can sell a $120 put option. So you can choose all these different strike prices and they have names for these strike prices. If the stock's at 100 and you sell a 100 strike put option, that's called an at the money option strike because the strike price is basically the same as where the current stock price is. If you sell a put option at a strike price, at a, at a level lower than the current stock price, that's called out of the money put options. The stock's at 100, you sell an 80 strike put option, that's an out of the money put option. That's what we concentrate mostly on here at the Smart Option Seller. And if the stock's at 100 and you sell a 120 strike put option, that's an in the money put option. Okay, that's what we're going to focus on today, in the money put options. So what's the point of choosing a uh, uh, you know, a different strike price like that. And remember, when you sell a put option, you get the money from the put option buyer. They have to pay you. So it's a great way to earn income off of the trade. Now, just remember, th in the end, you, you might have to end up buying shares of the stock and you'll have to pay out the money to buy those shares of stock. So you have to make sure, number one, it's a stock that you like. And number two, that you have the cash ready to go if you're in fact called upon to actually buy the shares. How does that happen? Well, if you sell a, if the stock's at 100 and you sell 100 uh, put option strike and all of a sudden the stock drops down to 80, that means you're gonna be called upon to buy the stock at $100 per share when it's currently trading at 80. So you'll be locking yourself into a loss, a $20 per share loss. So you have to make sure you're comfortable with the stock and that you can ride out any short-term fluctuations. What we do with the smart option sell if the stock's at 100, we always choose an out of the money strike because we want to give the stock leeway and and room you know, to move around in a normal trading range, okay? So we like that protection. On the flip side, let's go over what selling in the money put options can do for you. If you're going to sell an in the money put option, that's where the strike price is higher than the current stock price, you have to be extremely bullish on that stock extremely bullish because if the stock's at 100 and you sell $120 strike price, as long as the stock moves up above $120 per share by expiration, that option will expire worthless. And you can make a lot of money by selling in the money put options because in the money put options pay a lot more. The buyer has to pay a lot more for an in the money put option. It has value right off the bat. So it act, so it's worth is more. Okay, and we'll look at some examples and I'll show you what that means. I know this might be a little confusing for some of you. But the number one thing about selling in the money put options is that you must be very bullish on the stock because you think the stock is going to move up. That is your goal. Obviously, if you buy stocks or you're bullish on a stock, you think the stock price is going to go up. One way to take advantage of that, other than just buying shares of stock, is selling in the money put options. It's an extremely bullish strategy. So let's make sure we're all on the same page there. So if you're gonna sell an in the money put, make sure you're very bullish on the stock. Now, the benefits of that, if you're correct, and if the stock does move higher, then you can make a lot of money very quickly. Almost as much as you could make if you bought 100 shares of a stock, okay? And number two here, so, in either direction, the option price will, will move very quickly, the higher or lower, okay? And that's because in the money options have a large delta. I've talked about delta in the past. Delta tells you how far the option price will move or how much the option price will move in a corresponding move of the stock. So if the stock moves X amount, the option price will move X amount. Okay, that's what the delta tells you. So you'll always know how much your op option price will move in conjunction with the stock moves. That's what the delta tells you. And in the money options always have larger deltas. Deltas range from zero to 100. And, you know, in the money options have deltas, you know, 70, 80, 90 uh, percent. They're, they're, they're measured in percent. So 0 percent to 100 percent. In the money options have very large deltas, 70, 80, 90 percent. So that means if the stock moves, the option price will move as well. And if you're bullish, then the option price will move in your favor very quickly and in a large amount. So you have to be prepared for potential large swings in your option position, okay? 
And so profits and losses can occur very quickly right here. So remember, if you buy 100 shares of stock or however, however many shares of stock, shares of stock, it, it, your, your portfolio value with that position will fluctuate higher or lower just depending on where the stock goes. It's the same thing within the money options because they have large deltas. So the option value will fluctuate in large uh, ranges as well. So you need to be prepared for that, okay? Uh, as I mentioned earlier, when you sell an option, specific, specifically in this case, a put option, you get money right off the bat from the option buyer. And in the money options will have larger premiums than out of the money options or at the money options. So you're, you're, you're dealing in larger amounts here, large premiums, which a lot of people like because they're like, hey, I can collect all this large amount of money. This is a good thing. But you also have to remember the stock has to continue to move in your favor in order for you to keep that money. Okay. So there's always a downside to every strategy. Um, now, one thing that I will say is that when you sell put options, you are collecting large amounts of cash and that cash goes into your cash balance in your portfolio. So if you have a broker that pays interest, and I know interest payments these days are e extremely minimal, like almost non-existent, but a larger cash position in your account, of course, will create a nice interest credit, you know, at the end of the month when the broker, if the broker pays interest, they'll pay you a little bit more because you have this larger cash infusion. Well, now, when I was trading in the commodity pits in New York in the 1990s, you know, interest rates were five, six, 7% back then, short-term interest rates like T-bills and, you know, 90-day T-bills, whatever, or, or you know, three-month, uh, six-month T-bills. We were, we were required to, you know, hold a certain amount of cash in our account. And when we would sell options, whether they were call options or put options, we would bring in large amounts of money. And that money was sitting into the cash portion of our account. And our, our brokers would pay interest on that cash. And back then in the 1990s, that was a large amount, five, six, seven percent interest on hundreds of thousands of dollars of cash sitting in your account for, you know, three month trades, you get a little bit of interest payment. So that's a good thing. But in today's market, you know, interest rates are so low, it, it, you really won't see much of a, of a difference. But even still, if you have, if you're selling lots of put options, uh, you'll have extra cash sitting in your account until it expires. And, you know, maybe you'll see a couple extra dollars in your account if your broker pays interest. Now, the other thing about selling in the money put options is there is a, there is a much higher chance of assignment. Assignment means that the, 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 the option buyer is going to force you to buy the shares of the stock. Okay. When you sell a put option, what you're doing is obligating yourself to potentially buy shares of that stock. And it's called assignment at expiration or even before expiration, you might be called upon to buy shares of the stock and you have to pay for those shares in full. So you need to make sure that you have a cash ready to go. Now, you know, there's a very rare chance that you will be assigned before expiration. That's just how it works. Even if, even if the it's profitable for the option buyer to exercise their option, they most likely won't do it until the expiration date. That's just, it, it's not smart for someone to exercise an option before expiration, but on occasion it can happen. So you always have to be aware that you can be assigned at any time. So when you're selling in the money options, just pre be prepared that assignment could happen early and you'll have to have the cash ready to go to buy those shares of stock. So make sure you, it's a stock that you want at a price that you want. And we're going to look at the strike prices and see what our break evens would be. So the, the, whole, the whole gist of selling an in the money put option is because you can get larger infusions of cash when you sell that option, but you have to be super bullish. And if the stock moves in your favor, meaning it moves higher then that option position will give you quick, large profits. So you have to be sure about your stock picking abilities and making sure the stock moves in your favor over time. It doesn't have to be a one week trade or a one month trade. It could be a six month trade. The longer the expiration, the more money you will receive. And if you give yourself more time, it allows you to be correct in your stock assessment on a day-to-day -day basis or even on a week-to-week -week basis stock prices are so random you can get caught up in a, in a bad move one week um, but 
you got to give yourself some time for the stock to recover. So if you're selling, you know, in the money options, consider a longer term trade. What do I consider a longer term trade? I don't know, maybe three to six months out in time to give the stock an opportunity to move. Okay. Uh, the other thing with in the money options is there's not a lot of downside protection. There's not a lot of wiggle room for the stock to move lower. When we sell out of the money put options at the smart option seller, we allow ourselves at least a 20% fluctuation gap. The stocks here, we sell our put options down here. We have all this room for the stock to move around. But when you sell an in the money put option strike price up here, you don't have a lot of wiggle room. So you have to be pretty sure that the stock, the stock is going to make the move in the right direction for you. Okay. So, so we've gone over the, the basics of, you know, what in the money put options are, why you'd want to sell them. Let's talk about actual numbers. Let's take a look at some, you know, an example here and I'll pull up another page here and we'll, we'll, we'll write down some numbers. So let's take a look at, let's go to our, um, option chain here. Now let's take a look at a stock like, um, well, it's already on Oracle here. So let's just say you're bullish on Oracle. Okay. Oracle's currently $83 a share, $83 a share. And you know, you're thinking Oracle's going to go up in price. I'm just, I, I, I know it's going to go up in price. I like the fundamentals of the company. I've looked at the stock chart. Stock chart looks good. I think Oracle's ready to run. I think it's really ready to keep going higher. So, you know, if you're not willing to buy the shares of stock at $83, you can sell an in the money put option, collect your cash and wait for the stock to go up. Now here's uh, put options on the right hand side. Bid ask com is all we need to know that will show you the most current price of the option at that moment in time. Today is Saturday, June 5th. Market is closed right now, but we're looking at the December 17th, 2021 uh, options on Oracle. So these are roughly a little over six months, six month option. Okay. And we can look at September too, but if you're looking to sell an in the money option, um, uh, here's the, the Delta column as well. So we can see what the deltas are. Oracle's at $83. Do you think there's a chance it could get up to a hundred by December six months? You think Oracle can go from 83 up to a hundred. So you're looking to sell the 100 strike put option. Now this is not investment advice. This is just purely an example. So don't, please don't take this as a, as a trade, a real trade or a real recommendation, but your thoughts are Oracle can get up to hundred dollars a share, um, by December. So you want to sell an in the money put option with Oracle at $83, the 100 strike here's Oracle at 83 the 100 strikes up here, that is an in the money option. It's in the money by $17 per share. So the $100 put is worth roughly $18.50 per contract. Here's the bid, here's the ask. We always want to do something in between the bid ask numbers. So let's just say it's, it's worth $18.50 per contract. Now with the option multiplier, you have to multiply all these numbers by 100 to get your actual dollar amount that you will receive. So when you sell something at $18.50 per contract, you're going to get $1,850 in your account per each option that you sell. So let's just say you sell one contract, it's worth a hundred shares and you'll get $1,850 right then and there in your account for selling this put option. So what, what you've done here is that, <clears throat> okay, now you're on the hook to potentially buy 100 shares of Oracle at $100 a share um, by December. Now you're thinking to yourself, well, why would I want to buy Oracle at $100 a share when it's currently at $83? I can go in the market and buy it at $83 a share. Why would I want to buy it at 100? Well, because you're being paid, you're being paid this premium which lowers your potential buy-in price. So you always have to know what your cost basis is or your potential buy-in price here. Let's pull up a, let's pull up another sheet here. And so we'll write down some numbers. Oracle at 83, sell 100 put for 18.50 per contract. 
cost basis equals 100 strike. Take the strike minus the option premium equals eighty one fifty per share. Now let me just check my calculator. I want to make sure I did that right. One hundred minus eighteen fifty equals eighty one fifty per share. So this is what your cost basis would be uh, if you had to go ahead and buy the shares. If, if the option buyer decided to exercise the contract, you will be forced to buy 100 shares at $100 per share because that's the strike price. But since you're getting $18.50 per contract up front, that makes your true cost basis $81.50 per share. Okay, that's a dollar. It's a dollar fifty per share, cheaper than Oracle's current price of eighty-three. So this is what you're getting. You're getting to buy Oracle. Potential. You're you're potentially getting to buy Oracle at an eighty-one fifty price tag, while Oracle's currently at eighty-three. So you get a dollar fifty off, a dollar fifty per share discount. Okay. That's your cost basis if you ha if at expiration you were forced to buy the shares. Now let's go back and take a look at um, the option chain. So once again, why would you opt to sell a 100 in the money put? It has a delta of roughly 85%. So that means for every dollar that Oracle moves up, Oracle stock price for every dollar that Oracle stock price moves up, your put option value will decline by 85 cents per contract or $85. So that's what you're hoping to happen. You want Oracle to move up in price. So your option price will go down. That's how you will make a profit as a put option seller. You're selling the put option at 1850 per contract. You want that value option value to go down so sometime in the future, you can buy that option contract back at a cheaper price. That's your goal here. Your goal is for the option value to decline. Just as you sell any other kind of option, you always want the option value to decline so you can buy it back later at a cheaper value. That's how you lock in a profit. So if Oracle moves up, the in the money put option value will decline very quickly by 85%. That's the Delta. Okay. You're looking at a high Delta here. 85% is a high Delta. Now the one way to tell, well, you say, well, how, how, how do I know how far down the option price will go? Well, number one, that depends on how high or how high Oracle stock will travel. Okay. One way to kind of calculate that as a, as a, a you know, a ballpark is Oracle's currently at 83. You look at the most current at the money strike which is the 8250 puts. That's the closest strike price to the current price of Oracle. And that's worth roughly, you know, somewhere between $5.75 to $6 per contract, somewhere in that range. That's what the current at the money put option is worth. So if Oracle travels up to 100, if Oracle travels up to 100, then the 100 strike price becomes the at the money strike. So if Oracle jumps up $17, this hundred strike, which is worth currently 1850 will now be worth roughly what this one's worth somewhere between 575 and $6 a contract, because now the hundred, the 100 strike is at the money. If Oracle jumped up to hundred dollars a share. So you can kind of ballpark what the value of that option will be. It'll probably be lower than this because time decay and expiration moving ahead options lose value. So it's a good, easy way to ballpark. So if, if, if Oracle jumped from 83 to hundred, you know, in the next week, you can look at this 8250 strike to see Oracle will probably be worth about that. The 100 strike will go down from 1850. It'll drop all the way down to $6 per contract. So you're going to make yourself roughly $12 per contract, $1,200 in actual dollars. Okay. So that's a, that's a, 
easy, quick way to figure out how quickly or how much the option will be worth if Oracle jumped to your, you know, to where you think it would go, right? So it's at 83. If it jumps up to 100, all you have to do is compare the 100 strike to the 8250 strike to see where that option would be worth. And what you can do is you turn around and buy back the option for, let's say, $6. You'll lock in a $1,250 gain or $12.50 per contract. That's pretty good in one week time, right? It's a good, it's a good, uh, it's a good return on your money. So you're hoping that the stock moves up, not only moves up, but moves up quickly will allow you to um, make your profit very quickly as well. So you have to be very bullish on the stock. And the stock doesn't have to move right away. As long as it moves up over time, you'll make money. Okay, so in the money option sells, in the money put option sells, number one, are hoping for a big move in the stock. So the option value will decline and then you buy it back for, you know, a gain. That's how you make the money by selling in the money put options. Now on the downside, what happens if the stock drops <clears throat> instead of going up? Well, in that case, you're going to hold a losing position. Just if you bought, just as if you bought shares of stock, if the stock declines, you're going to lose money. Same thing with selling in the money put options. If the stock drops, you're going to lose money very quickly. If, if Oracle drops a dollar, your put option value is going to go up by 85 cents a contract. Okay, that remember that's the the delta, 85 percent. So for every dollar that Oracle drops, you're going to lose 85 dollars uh, per contract on your option position. Okay, so just be aware. Let's just say Oracle. Let's just say Oracle dropped $10. So you'll lose roughly $8.50 on your option contract. Okay. Now you're in the hole by $850. That's if Oracle drops by $10. So you have to be pretty sure that the stock's going to go up. And if the stock goes down, you're going to you're going to have a paper loss, a larger paper loss. So you have to be prepared for those larger swings. If you want to play with 85 delta options, you're going to deal with large price swings. So you have to make sure you're comfortable with that. Now, what happens if Oracle drops down to $70, which is $13 lower, and we're getting close to expiration? Well, the option buyer is going to come in and say, you know what, I'm exercising this option. You need to buy these shares for $100 a share while Oracle's at 70. You know, that's a, that's a, you know, a, a loss right there. So you have to be sure that you want to do this trade. And, um, so we've, we've showed you how to calculate your cost basis. Um, what about stop loss? Like, how do you protect yourself? What, what is your, what is your defense defensive plan? Well, as with any other investment, what's, what's your, what's your defensive mechanism? Most likely it's, you set a stop loss. Okay. Do you, and you can, there's two ways you can set a stop loss. You can set a stop loss based on where the stock chart goes. You know, if Oracle's at 83 now, what do you set? A 20% stop loss? So if Oracle drops 20%, you can get out. Or you look at the chart patterns. If it breaks support, you get out. Or you can set a stop loss based off the option price itself. So if you sold the 100 put for $18.50 a contract and you say to yourself, you know what, I'm not willing to lose more than $1,000. Um, so then if um, the option price runs up to Twenty-eight fifty per contract. That'll be a thousand dollar loss. So you can watch the option price, or you can watch the stock price and see, you know, how it fluctuates, and and you know, make your decision there. Okay, so that's all about how you can uh, protect yourself. Let's go back to the original document here, down here, stop loss. You can use the stock chart to gauge where you might want to get out, or the option price stop level. It's, it's, it's being smart. You know, you have to protect yourself. So just remember selling in the money put options, you're playing with larger numbers, which could give you a, a larger profit, but the stock has to move in the right direction very quickly. If you're not very good at, you know, looking at charts or picking stock direction, playing in the money, selling in the money put options could be a little bit riskier or a little bit too aggressive for you. So make sure you're comfortable with the strategy. That's why we only sell out of the money put options here because we, we err on the side of caution. I'm always thinking the stock's going to drop. So I want to give myself and my readers a lot of cushion, a lot of buffer. 
and but the but the offsetting that is that we we collect l- smaller amounts of premium. So there's a trade-off. Do you want more premium? Well, you're going to have more risk. Less premium, less risk, or larger buffer for downside movement. So it's all a trade-off. Options are all a trade-off. Okay. So if we go back to the option chain here, if you looked at September options, uh, those 100 puts are worth. Let's see what those 100 puts are worth when the numbers filter in. Okay. So 100 puts are worth now maybe $17.50 a contract. So it's about about a dollar less you'll get. Um, and let, you know, get three months less in time. So you decide, you know, how, how much time do you want to give yourself when you're, when you're trading these options? All right. So that's your lesson on selling in the money put options. Please be careful. If you use this strategy, it's, it's a very bullish strategy. Make sure you're, you're bullish on the stock and make sure it's a stock that you would like to potentially own. Make sure you know how to figure out your cost basis, cost basis. Once again, take the strike price minus the amount that you're receiving that gives you your cost basis. Okay, let's move on to the next part of our Saturday synopsis, which is the, we take a look at the stock charts. We look at individual stocks, we look at the indexes. We like to see where the market has been and where it may be going. I like doing this. I like showing um, my watchers, you know, how I do technical analysis. Technical technical analysis. It's all about chart reading. It's all about looking for patterns, support and resistance levels to see where the stock or the index might be going next. So we always start with our uh, SPY, which is the exchange traded fund, the S&P 500. We open up the chart here. This gives us the broadest measure of the market as a whole. Now, what we're seeing here is, and I, if you've been watching my videos, you know, I've been bullish, very bullish for, you know, all the future. That's just because that's the way the stock market goes. But I like how things are happening here in the U.S. At least, the coronavirus is is you know on on the down, on the downward. The vaccines are rolling out. We have about forty percent of the U.S. population that has been fully vaccinated. Summer's here. People are getting out. People are feeling good. They have a a lot of disposable income to spend. So that means you're just going to buy products. The, the you the individual consumer. Uh, you know, is, is responsible for it, close to two thirds of, of, um, the U S um, uh, GDP. I think that's what the number is, right? So the, the U S consumer is pretty much, pretty much moves the, the economy in the U S and when people have a lot of disposable income, summer's here, they're feeling good. They want to go out. They're going to be buying products and that it's in turn spells larger profits for companies and better earnings during their earnings announcements and better future guidance from companies. And that just drives stock prices higher. And, and in addition to that, you're not going to get a return on your money anywhere else. You know, not your bank account, not CDs, not bonds, gold, you know, maybe real estate, but real estate is very liquid and you can't just click your mouse and get in and out. So the stock market's where it's at. That's where the returns are. So let's take a look at the S P 500 and why I'm still very bullish. Um, we always take a look at the daily chart first. Um, I have the open high, low close bars. Each bar you see is one day's worth of trading. And on the chart, I have a 20 day, simple moving average, a 50 day, simple moving average, 200 day, simple moving average, and the 14 day RSI overbought, oversold indicator down here. But we like to look at the chart action. We like to look at the prices themselves to see what's happening. As I've been saying over time, when stocks are in an uptrend or whatever whatever movement they've been moving, in this case uptrend, they will typically bounce off either the 50-day or 20-day moving average. Now you can see the index here. This is the S&P 500 has been nicely tracking the 20-day moving average or the 50-day moving average. When it pulls back it will bounce off of either one of those lines. And you can see here it's been, it was bouncing off the 20 day moving average. These two occasions, it, it dropped a little below the 50 day, but bounced back very quickly here again, bounced off the 50 day right here. And then most recently again, right here, bounced off the 50 day. Here's the 20 day. Looks like yeah, Thursday had a nice bounce right on the 20 day moving average line. Okay. And yesterday, Friday, June 4th, 2021, 
can see the little dash marks on the right side of each bar. That means the closing price of the day. The closing price is the most important price of the day because it gives it can give momentum for the next day. Close right near the high of the day. And it looks like we may have tagged an all-time new high uh, during the day. Now, the top of the bar is the intraday high. The low of the bar is the low of the day. So the S&P 500 right on all time new highs here, which I really like. And what we also look for on the charts are the patterns that they are making. One of my most favorite patterns and one of the most bullish patterns I think is the ascending wedge or the ascending triangle. What is that? Well, ascending means something's ascending going up. So what you can do is you draw your, you can draw your trend line as the ascending part. You can see and then what you do is there's what's called the flat top, okay? The flat part of the triangle. So we got this pattern right here. I'm going to show you a couple other charts that I like that have either blasted through or getting ready to blast through. So this is called an ascending wedge, ascending triangle, whatever you want to call it. When it's building this upward momentum that keeps getting knocked back down by this resistance line. This is the resistance line. It means resistance means the stock is having a little trouble getting through to that next phase, but it's got this bullishness behind it. So the more times it, 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 it hits the resistance, the more pressure it is for it to finally pop through. So we're watching the S and P 500 try to get through maybe the 423 level of it pops through the resistance line gets up to 423 and moves above this resistance line for a couple days it's off to the next leg of the bull move okay so i like the pattern ascending triangle pattern the the s p 500 looks ready to just bust through this and and move on to the next leg of all-time new highs so i like how the s p 500 looks let's take a look at the dow jones dow jones here same thing it's it's moving up. It has been moving up, bouncing off either the 20 day or 50 day had the bounce here, had the bounce here. Now, if you're, if you're, if, you know, if you're, you're wanting to get long and you're waiting for that timing mechanism, the timing mechanism is wait for the bounce off of one of the lines and then get in. Okay. The bounce here was nice. I don't know. You know, people start to think all oh, the stocks markets moving down. Here comes the next bear market. Here comes the next leg lo lower. It doesn't happen. It, it happens, yes, but for a short period of time until it bounces. And so whenever, you know, a stock or index makes an all-time new high and then starts to come off, people think well, that's the end of it. It's never going to go higher again. And people are afraid to jump in. They'll say, well, I'll get in when, you know, after it sells off for a while. Well, here's the sell-off. Did you get in? Nope. Here's the sell-off. Did you get in here? Nope. And and people just remain on the sidelines because they're so fearful of the bear market and that's understandable but you have to look at the history of the market the stock market just goes up over time and you have to be on board if you want to have some long-term wealth okay so if you're looking for that timing mechanism you wait for the bounce and the dow is not as strong as the s p 500 here's the all-time high back here this was on may 10th so but it's on its way it's on its way you can also look at potential you can also look at a potential ascending ascending triangle. Um, you could possibly draw it like here and draw this line here. You know, so these are just patterns to look for. That's all. Uh, and I'll show you where you can look for these. Um, there's some websites you can look for. I'll show you those again. So that's the Dow. Dow looks strong. Everything looks strong. Looks like it wants to keep moving up. Let's look at the NASDAQ because that's been the weaker of the three main indexes. Been having trouble getting through. Uh, to new highs. So the NASDAQ's been sort of trading in this larger channel that I drew in the past. I drew this downtrending channel, didn't last very long, popped out. So we, we can kind of see the W pattern forming. Okay. The W pattern is a bullish pattern once it gets above the resistance line. So here I'm waiting for, it looks like the NASDAQ's ready to move back up to the resistance line. The key will be if it can pop through then it should start to make all time new highs. But a lot of the tech stocks have been having trouble for the last, you know, couple months, just kind of been churning around in the range. So it was, a, it was definitely the leader coming out of the pandemic, 
but now it's you can see the sideways action compared to the the s p 500 which has been just mostly moving up mostly moving up while the nasdaq is just kind of churning right you can see you can see the pattern here so a little sideways action so we're waiting for it to get up through here Okay, so let's take a look at some individual charts. Well, let's 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 stay on that theme of the ascending triangle. I want to show you a couple stock charts here. Oracle, which we just talked about, actually had a nice, beautiful ascending triangle. I don't have it on this chart; uh, it's on the other computer that I use. But I want to show you what I was seeing. And now you have to you have to condition yourself to look for these patterns. Had this beautiful ascending part right here. Right, you draw the trend line from the bottoms of most recent action, and then you draw across to the resistance. And it made this beautiful pop out just the other day. Thursday, it started to creep out. I had bought some shares when it was just in here. I was kind of anticipating a move, got a little ahead of myself, but, but Oracle had the nice pop out. All time new highs for Oracle like the stock. And so you need to look for these patterns. How far back do you go? It, it depends. This is a daily chart. You know, just my real estate goes back a couple years, but the ascending triangle doesn't need to be more than maybe, you know, a month or two, three months if you want. You know, I could have drawn this line from, could have drawn the line from down here. Okay. It all depends what, what you're seeing on the charts. So the ascending triangle pattern is very bullish. Um, also on, was it Cisco? Cisco's also, Cisco, Cisco, not the food company Cisco, but this Cisco company also has uh, a nice little ascending pattern here. Take away that one long bar, that one long down bar. You can see, start here, make another line here. Okay, so... These are all ascending triangle patterns. So Cisco could maybe churn a little bit more in here and then look for it to pop out. That's, that's the ascending triangle. Let me bring you up to the website where you can get some more information on this. Um, let me pull it up. Is this it? The, okay, so I've showed this, this stock, this, this website before, chartpatterns.com, chartpatterns.com. It'll show you all the different chart patterns right here. This is the ascending triangle. You click on it and it'll give you an example. It's exactly what the charts I've just been showing you. And once it moves above the, the resistance, it's off to the races, okay? So we go back to the chart. You can see Cisco looks like that. Oracle looks like that. I think, was it McDonald's? Has sort of, eh, not as much, not as much, maybe, depends, uh, not as crystal clear. I'm trying to think what other, might have been Merck, was it Merck? No, not Merck, Procter & Gamble maybe? Yeah, Procter & Gamble was something, so I had this pattern on maybe from a couple weeks ago. Was making, was making a nice pattern, it dropped below it, let me blow this up here. Um, dropped out of it. So it, it's, it's better to wait for it to pop out for a day or two because you can get a false move, which Procter & Gamble was, fell back out, but now it's starting to move back in. It's starting to move back in. So I'm waiting on Procter & Gamble. Okay, so it's all about looking for patterns, seeing what you can see on the charts. Um, let's take a look at some, some individual stocks. We always look at Apple because I talk about Apple, it's one of the positions that I hold. Uh, Apple has been very frustrating for me. Obviously you can see as part of the NASDAQ, it's just been, it's just been churning in this range here, not doing much, not doing much. Right now it's sitting right on the 200 day moving average. About holding, holding support, wanna see it move on Friday, Got just on the 20 day moving average. Okay, I like to see Apple start to move higher. It's just just an ugly chart, not really doing anything. So I need Apple to get going again. Let's look at Tesla. Tesla also is is testing um, the bulls, right? It's it, Here's the 200 day moving average. This is the, the big line in the sand, the 200 day moving average. Tesla 
is hovering right around it, hovering right around the 20 day, the blue 20 day as well. So we really need to see Tesla, um, you know, get off its butt and start to move higher. There's a lot of news out there about Tesla, Elon Musk and all, um, just, there's always news swirling around the company. So if you're going to play this company, you know, get ready for the volatility. There's just, there's just a lot of, a lot of information happening with Tesla. So be prepared for the, the ups and downs. Um, it's, it's just hanging on that 200 day moving average. It really needs to get itself back up there. Uh, Amazon, Amazon still, still in this super wide channel here, still not really going anywhere. It's just been hovering around that $3,200 level goes up, down, not a lot of, not a lot of momentum in either direction. So, so Amazon's just been not really doing much. We like to look at AMD. I love AMD as a company, but it also has been sort of stuck. There was a couple W patterns that we, we did here, but they never really materialized. Um, just kind of trading in this range here between 75 and 85. Uh, I'd like to see it get above $85. Uh, it's, it, it bounced pretty good off the support area, right? This blue line is the support area we drew a long time ago. So it definitely bounced there, found its footing. So AMD is still kind of churning around. And this is what you'll probably get during the summer months. You get a lot of churn, you know, people go away on vacation. So there's not a lot of direction. There's a lot of chop. Um, so it's hard to really get a gauge or hard to find stocks that are moving in good momentum. Walmart is another Walmart. Okay, so Walmart sort of made this ascending triangle pattern, but still kind of hovering, still kind of hovering um, around $140, $141, just kind of hanging out there. Once again, the churn. I think there was another, was it, was it Colgate? Let me pull up Colgate. Yeah, so Colgate's got potentially the, the ascending triangle. Okay, you, you connect the lows. And then you, you draw the line at the resistance. So Colgate's got a little bit of time here. It could potentially, um, you know, hover around here a little bit, but look for it to pop above maybe $85, $86 uh, to, to move on to all-time new highs. All right, so that's what I'm seeing here. Let me see if there's any other, any other. Uh, Microsoft is still in this channel. We drew this channel a long time ago. You can see it, a channel, the stock will bounce off the, bounce off the bottom and hit resistance and come back down. So it is kind of trading in this channel, but still in an upwards trajectory. So the next move for Microsoft could be to move back up towards the top end of this channel. If you're looking to be bullish on Microsoft, there's some a chart pattern you can look at. What else? What else? Disney, anything? Oh, so Disney's sort of been in this little bit of a downtrending channel that I drew. Don't remember drawing that, but you can see it, it moves along the channel. Uh, so Disney's sort of in a, in a bit of a down slope. Um, so watch for it to bounce and move within that range. Um, ba, 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 ba. Anything else of note? Pepsi. Pepsi might have a might have a ascending triangle potential. Let's let's draw the lines. We'll keep it on the chart for a while. You can draw it from here. Connect the bottoms. And then you look for a little draw resistance line or straight across the top. So right there, you got Pepsi potential, potential upside action. This is Pepsi. Um, and then the, the Bitcoin stocks, we have Riot and had the, the triangle waiting to bust out in either direction, the downside, but is bouncing off the 200 day moving average. Riot and Marathon, <clears throat> Mara, same thing was in this uptrending channel, but fell out. Here's the 200 day support. The others like these meme stocks, AMC, I'll, I'll mention these a little bit. AMC just blasted higher. It's unbelievable uh, how these stocks can make the move. GameStop still <clears throat> had the triangle, finally blasted out. What else we got? Um, Blackberry, these are the meme stocks, Blackberry, Bed Bath Beyond, yeah, I had AMC. Okay, um, another one on the short, the short ratio, uh, short interest. 
as workhorse is another stock that had a lot, has a lot of short interest. I mean, there's a lot of people selling this thing. And when it gets into a short squeeze, stock could really rally. You can see what happened. Went from like eight or $9 up to 17, $18. Uh, workhorse could, could rally back up if the wall street bets, the Reddit people get on this one, see the high short interest shot, high short interest could could propel this thing higher. This is not a recommendation. I'm just saying these are these are some of these meme stocks. Okay, we're at about 50 minutes here. I'm going to call it on this one. That's your your uh, Saturday synopsis. Once again, the market itself, the the stock indexes. I'm 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 bullish here. Um, we got the ascending triangle pattern for the S&P 500. Looks good. So that's my assessment. Once again, let's let's go back to <clears throat> our website. Smart option seller. Don't forget, put selling basics. Put your name in here. Email. We'll send you a free guide. And also, if you if you're looking for future information about our small exclusive um, put selling deep dive seminar, webinar, coaching, whatever you want to call it, we're we're looking to get going on that this summer. I'll have more information soon. All right, that's it for me. Uh, I hope everyone has a great weekend. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button in this YouTube video. Give me a thumbs up if you like this content. Leave me a comment. Send me an email. Love hearing from you. All right, that's all for me today. I hope everyone has a great weekend and a great week ahead. This is Lee Lowell signing off.